I'd like to ask you a question that has to deal with social relations between people. And this has been kind of concerning me for the years that I've been associated with you. I know that you say that when we get angry or when we get mad, that it's a weakness within ourselves, and I believe it. But I also know that sometimes when I deal with people, I sometimes get very infuriated by what happens, even though it might be to a large extent my own fault. And I feel sometimes a great anger growing within myself that I wish to express right then and there. In other words, I want to tell them off. So I'd like to know this, Maharishi, and perhaps you can help me. I know that when we do speak words that are negative in anger, they do pollute the environment. But I also know if I hold this anger within myself, I will feel a great stress. So I'd like to know how best to handle it. Can I express my anger, or should I somehow or other deal with it in a different manner? Yogastha Guru Karmani. That is the formula for action. What to do being established in being perform action. Then what will happen? The self is then established on that level of life which unites everything, which underlies everything, then everything is more in terms of ourself. Everything is dear. If the finger gets into the ink of the fountain pen, it's the mistake of the finger. We don't cut it down, because we know it's, it's a part of our life, it's a part of our life. When our awareness of, of grows, other things are a part of our life. Even if this sense is missing, even if the sense is missing that uh, that is a part of my life, that is a part of my life. We don't have to have that sense in our conscious awareness, but just as we don't have to have the, the, the conscious awareness that the finger is a part of my body, nobody remembers that. Huh? In our mind, we don't remember that body is mine, finger is mine, no. Spontaneously, the awareness is such that the body is mine, and this is mine, and this is mine. So, when our awareness is limited to the body alone, then spontaneously, without even remembering or memorizing, the finger is a part of our body, and spontaneously, the behavior towards the finger is very intimate. Absolutely intimate. Like that, when the awareness broadens, and it does broaden as we dive into being more and more, with the infusion of being more and more, the awareness broadens, and everything spontaneously becomes a part of our being. More and more in terms of that, and more and more in terms of that. So just as we don't punish the finger, for having been in the ink, it's a mistake. Like that, we don't punish someone for the mistake, because it's just a part and parcel. What we do is remove the mistake, remove the ink, no punishment. So the punishment comes 
with our first thing with our inability to have that cordial relationship to have that sense of oneness and love and dearness that in a spontaneous manner it's a level of consciousness it is spontaneous it's not a, it's not a matter of intellect we don't have to analyze it's just a spontaneous awareness and then that is the spontaneity of the feeling that is the spontaneity of of behavior without understanding even without feeling that's the level of life and this is the characteristic of broadened awareness broadened awareness so what we have to do in order to have ideal behavior with other people and ideal not only behavior but ideal perception perception now such an ideal perception is most valuable to us on one side it is the it is the application of our own level of awareness on the second with this application this kind of awareness becomes more and more established one thing is the level of our own consciousness but if we don't apply this level of consciousness to the field of activity in behavior with others then this awareness remains dominant it remains latent even if it is our awareness but then it must be applied it must be used and putting it to use it gets stabilized in the field of action and more and more stabilization of this level of awareness produces more and more fuller life because fullness of life lies in harmony the perception is more harmonious on that level of harmonious perception behavior is spontaneously harmonious and this harmonious behavior firstly does good to our life in the environment secondly it stabilizes it integrates our inner value in the outside both together the, the environment becomes enriched and the life becomes enriched and in a spontaneous manner and this our system of tm that without any intellectual implication or emotional implication the consciousness grows the awareness becomes broadened becomes by the time it becomes unbounded that unbounded awareness is the characteristic on which such a kind of natural behavior can be possible because once that awareness is there established behavior will always be ideal just as we behave with our body without thinking and even without feeling in a very loving way spontaneous way so also we behave with everything else and this is when the limited boundaries are broken and they are not broken anywhere only the ignorance that limits our perception and that limits our behavior in the sense that behavior becomes complicated it's all due to the limitation of our awareness and as we dive and as uh, physiologically as our stress is released deep rooted stresses are released more and more spontaneously our nervous system our body becomes capable of reflecting that your awareness more and more 
So what we have to do is create a situation so that spontaneously that pure awareness is reflecting from our body and on that basis understanding will be so profound, sharp and perfect. Discrimination will reach its height. You don't have to think and analyze to discriminate. The whole thing is on the surface because the deepest value of life is vibrating in your perception, in your feeling, in your understanding and that translates into action. So the whole field of behavior is dependent on what we are, how small or how big, how limited uh, or how broad we are in our awareness and spontaneously that is the level of behavior, doesn't matter what. So it's not only, you see the life is, is wholeness, life is wholeness, when we live life we are living wholeness and it's not possible to control wholeness by amending parts, some aspect, anger or greed or oh, this thing or that thing, these are the aspects, aspects. So the wholeness can neither be amended nor be properly analyzed or understood even by taking care of the parts. On the other hand, parts can be enriched by the blossoming of wholeness. Awareness is wholeness. Perception, behavior, this, this, these are the channels of application of that wholeness. So, there is no way to try to improve the parts without improving the, uh, the, the totality of our life. That is why the basic thing to improve any aspect of life and behavior is a very, very important aspect of life. To do that, we just broaden awareness and to broaden awareness, we make use of nothing other than what life is, life as life, infinite, unbounded, eternal and therefore we just open our awareness to that, we open and know it, know what we are. And once we know what we are, there is no restriction, no limitation. We just flow like, even though we flow in the waves, but we flow like an ocean remaining stationary, yet ever flowing in high waves. The ocean never flows, but it flows in waves altogether it flows without altogether flowing. So when we behave established in that wholeness, behavior is compatible to that wholeness and in the wholeness only evolution is possible. No negativity is possible. Wholeness is the summation of all positivities. anger or whatever, these are all the uh, resistances, as if resistances for the blossoming of fullness of life. And we handle all that through meditation and action, meditation and action. Hmm? Thank you. <laughs>